Cooper. Good morning. Great to be in the Lord's house. Our AM service, Facebook friend, we welcome you also. Thank you for joining us. Uh, grab a hymn book in front of you. There should be a hymn book and turn to page 327. Page 327, Higher Ground. Page 327, let's stand together. By the way, where's everybody at? Can somebody get the people downstairs? Can somebody go downstairs and say we're having church? All right. Uh, so page 327, Higher Ground. Okay, let's stand together. Let's stand on our feet. And let's sing this together. Page 327, Higher Ground. Notice, notice the chorus, okay? Notice the chorus of... Uh, Higher ground, page 327 in our hymn book, it says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's ta table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Don't you want that? That's what I want. That's spiritual growth. I want God to plant my feet on higher ground. You know, I want to grow spiritually. I want God to me move me up to a higher step spiritually. That's what it is. Amen. That's what it's all about. We got to be growing spiritually. And that's what I, the message this morning is about growing spiritually. So, uh, Higher Ground, page 327, as Brother Jer leads us into these uh, four verses of page 327, Higher Ground. second hymn this morning. Let us turn together to hymn number 288 in our song books. I am resolved, hymn number 288, I am resolved. Peace. 
church cleaners for keeping the church clean thank you for doing that appreciate it and then we have uh, soul winning when we go out uh, Saturdays that so we meet at 1030 we have a little prayer before we leave and then we go out in teams and we just try to share the gospel with people in per fanboy just try to look for opportunity to show people how they could be sure when they die they go to heaven because a lot of people don't know that and, um, <clears throat> and let's continue to do that uh, as Brother Jared uh, gives the 10 visits to the members, turn in the 10 visits so we give you 10 more fresh ones, and let's keep that pattern going. And I appreciate those who are doing that faithfully and keep those who are sick in prayer. Brother Jeff, keep him in prayer. Uh, that the Lord will continue to give him healing. Uh, he's looking pretty good. I went to visit him, and he's looking good. He's uh, healing, so pray for that because then he's going to have to go get his other foot done. One is done, and then he got to get the other one done. Brother Jeff wants to get, get them out of the way. But hey, Brother Jeff is in good spirit, so uh, keep him in prayer. Uh, maybe uh, you call him or send him a text or something and let him know you're praying for him. Uh, I, you know, many times you hear people say, you know, when I was sick, nobody visited me. And I, 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 I have some people, I, say, I can't go to that church. They're not loving people. When I was sick, nobody called me, nobody. And you know what? Uh, it, it, that should not be said of us. We should be always uh, be looking out for each other. Uh, pray for Diane. Diane's not here. She's not feeling well. She's watching to live streaming. Pray for her also. She's not feeling well. Speedy recovery. Uh, that the Lord will help her with the uh, flu that she's experiencing. And of course, Brother Mike, good to see you. Keep, keep Brother Mike in prayer. He's feeling better. Brother Mike wasn't here someday, but he's here this morning. He's up there. So keep Brother Mike in prayer. So, uh, uh, and pray for Susie and Brother George as they are in Puerto Rico and uh, <clears throat> uh, as they head back uh, pray for traveling mercies for them and um, by the way pray for them they lost the, 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 the beautiful dog that they had you know how it is you know when you have a pet you love them like your own loved one you love them and you miss them you love them like, like, like your own loved one a relative so it's, it's a real pain we experienced it twice. It's a real pain, and uh, they lost. Uh, they took her to Puerto Rico, and uh, you know, she died. So pray for them, for comfort for them during this difficult time for them. So let's pray, and let's ask the Lord to meet with us this morning. Let's bow her for prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for working our life. Thank you for those who are here this morning, Lord. And I pray you bless the word of God, Lord. The, the church is the the place, dear God, where we get fed spiritually. This is where we grow spiritually. This is where I get, we get our focus back in God. This is where we get our priorities right. Lord, this is where we learn to put the Lord first. This is where we learn that the Christian life is living Christ. Not just Sundays, but every day. And uh, thinking biblically. Lord, and um, you want us to be spiritual. You want us to think biblically and be heavenly minded. And Lord, I pray that you would do that to the message. I pray that we take the word of God serious. Dear God, and that we, you, how, do, how does God speak? Through the messenger, through the pastor. That's how God speaks. And I pray that uh, we realize that and that as the God's word is preached, that we realize that's God is speaking. That's the a way of the communication that God speaks to his people. And that we take the word of God serious, Lord. We let it sink in. And then we leave those doors put into practice what we heard so that our life could be changed our life could be blessed may you do that lord do that do that for the people that are here and the ones that are listening through live stream we thank you for them lord we need your help we need your presence bless the giver because god love a cheerful giver bless the offering in jesus name amen
Praise the Lord. Let's stand together, whosoever is able. If you're able to stand, let us turn to hymn number 321 in our songbooks. Where he leads, I'll follow. Hymn number 321, the Lord is our shepherd, and he, he leadeth me. He always leads us, but please let us have that desire in our heart as we sing this unto the Lord that we want to follow our Savior. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dearer far than any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless I see. He the great example is in pattern for me. Where he leads I'll follow, follow all the way. Where he leads I'll follow, follow Jesus every day. Sweet is the tender love Jesus hath shown, sweeter far than any love that mortals have known. of God's Word. This morning in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, looking at the first three verses there in 1 Peter, chapter 2. So there in 1 Peter, chapter 2, starting in verse 1, the Word of the Lord reads, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. Please be seated. All right, title of my message this morning is, It's Time to Grow Up. It's time to grow up. How many of you, I don't know, and I was expect you to know, but uh, I think I shared this before, uh, this, this question I'm going to ask. How many of you have heard of the Peter, Peter Pan syndrome? Anybody ever heard of the Peter Pan syndrome. Well, the Peter Pan syndrome is a metaphor based on the concept of not growing up and being trapped in childhood. That's what that is. The Peter Pan syndrome is a popular metaphor to describe people who find it difficult to grow up. And it's usually a man who don't want to grow up. They don't want to grow up. They don't want to assume responsibility. This man has the body of an adult, but the mind of a child. He doesn't want to enter into the adult life. He doesn't want to get married. How many young people here want to get married one day? 
look, we got some. Uh, Sam, we want to get married one day. Okay, how many of you want to stay single for the rest of your life? Okay, that's good too. Less headaches. Amen? Because you know when, when you got more family and kids, more headaches. They're sinners. They're going to do wrong. So, that's the, so this is a person. They call it the Peter Pan syndrome. This is a person who want to get married. They don't want to have kids. He don't want to hold a job. He wants mom and dad to always take care of him. He just wants to relax and have a good time. He basically refused to grow up and mature and assume adult responsibility. Now, now you know. When somebody says, what is the Peter Pan syndrome? That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what. How many of you heard that for the first time? The Peter Pan syndrome. Now you know. When you ever hear uh, the Peter Pan, that's what it means. That's what it means. And we have people today, I believe, that they are suffering from that Peter Pan syndrome. There's many people that don't want to grow up and assume responsibility. They don't want to mature. They don't want to grow up. And look, we got young people here that mom and dad takes care of you. And that's okay because you're still young. But there's going to come a time where you're going to have to grow up. You're going to have to mature. You're going to have to assume responsibility. And you can't be dependent on mom and dad. You're going to have to get your own job and pay your own bills. All of us are going to get there one day. That's, you know what that is? When you do that, you're growing up. You are maturing. And that's what God wants. We have, you know, sadly this morning, as we look at our text in 1 Peter chapter 2, in verses 1 to 3, we're going to find Christians here that are suffering, I believe, from the Peter Pan syndrome, spiritually. They don't want to grow up. They have a problem. And we're going to see here, these people are stuck in the infant stage. And the situation was sad. They were not growing up spiritually. They were stuck, trapped in the spiritual infancy. And they were stuck. They were babes in Christ. You know that God wants us to experience normal spiritual growth? I'm talking to saved people. God wants us to experience normal spiritual growth. That's in the Bible. Let me read to you a verse, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Because Peter is the one that's telling us here, it's time to grow up. And God wants us to experience normal spiritual growth. Look, let me read to you 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Peter 3, 18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. You know, when you are growing normally spiritually and you grow spiritually, where's she going? Help her out, Monsi. When we, look, when we are, look, I, I, I want to encourage everybody, can you just stay here? While the word of God is being preached, amen. You know, we want God to speak to you and Satan does not want you to hear this message. Because God wants to change your behavior and change your life so he can bless you. Amen. And we could, we could stay here and pay attention. Don't, don't, don't allow the enemy to use you to be a distraction to others. Stay here. And let's listen up. So, God's plan has always been birth, growth, and maturity. That's God's plan. Birth, grow, and maturely. That's always been God's plan. That's why the Apostle Paul meant in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in verse 11 when he said this, Paul. Exactly what I'm talking about, that God's plan has always been birth, grow, and maturely. And Paul emphasized that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in verse 11 when he said, when I was a child. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. See, God wants us to grow up spiritually. Not at immature. That's God's plan. God's plan has always been birth, 
growth and maturity. If you're interested in growing up spiritually, and you don't want to remain a spiritual baby, well, listen to the message this morning. It's going to help you. Because I believe Peter gives us three steps if we want to grow spiritually this morning. By the way, let me ask you this. God knows your heart. How many of you want to grow spiritually? How many of you want to be mature Christians? Okay? My hand's up. My hand's up. So if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to normally grow spiritually and be the mature Christian that God wants you to be, hear the message. Take heed of the message because Peter is going to give you those three simple steps and how to grow spiritually. And I'm going to give them to you. Number one, the step number one, you have to renounce the sin of your life or eliminate the sin of your life. That's the first thing you must do. You must renounce the sin of your life. I must renounce the sin of my life. And we find that in the first verse of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Number two, the second step is we must receive the word of God. Number one, we must renounce the sin of your life. Number two, we must receive the word of God. And number three, we must realize that God is good. And this is all in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, in the first three verses, the outline right there. These are the three steps you need if you want to grow spiritually be mature. you got to follow these three steps. That's the formula. Okay? No rock and science. It's an easy message to understand. So let's look at number one. In order for you to grow spiritually, number one, renounce the sin of your life. Or eliminate the sin of your life. Okay? Look at 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Look at it. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, follow your Bible. It says here, Wherefore, Peter says, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Now, this laying aside here is a picture of taking off dirty clothes. I don't think people here listening to my voice, I don't think you wear the same clothes every day for days. Right? Why? Why not? Why? You know why? Because I could answer that because the clothes get dirty. They start smelling, right? And that's why you change your clothes and you put clean clothes, right? So that's the, that's the thought here, that's the picture here when he's talking about laying aside. So it's a picture of taking off dirty clothes and you put on clean ones. You know, babies, he's dealing with people that are not growing spiritually. They're stuck. They're trapped in their spiritual infancy. We should not be stuck in our spiritual infancy. We should be growing spiritually. If you've been saved for a year, you should be growing spiritually. So, babies have a hard time staying clean. Babies have, they have trouble staying clean. You know, a baby cannot stay clean. You know, you give a baby a bath, right? In the, in the tub. You moms, you remember that when they were, your kids were little, right? You give your baby a bath in the bathtub, and after you clean them up, you put baby powder, right? If you don't keep your eyes on that baby, after you give them a good bath and put powder, that baby is going to make a mess. If you don't keep your eyes on that baby, that baby will in the tub. Right after you wash them up and put powder, that baby will go and grab the shampoo, make a mess with the shampoo. Grab the baby wipes. We'll have a party with the baby wipe. We'll grab the paper toilet and he'll make a mess. Because babies have a hard time to stay in staying clean. They'll play in the toilet water. If you don't keep your eyes on them, they'll, they'll play in the cat litter. The cat litter. Or even in the wet dog wee-wee pad. They'll do that. They'll take the spaghetti, when you feed them spaghetti, and they'll take it and they, they put it over their hair. They'll take the apple juice and they'll pour it over their head. Because babies have a hard time staying clean. They do. They have trouble staying clean. And you know, if we're going to grow spiritually, we need to learn to stay clean spiritually. We need to get rid of sins in our life. We need to renounce sins in our life. 
If we want to grow, you raise your hand, you want to grow spiritual, it starts with this. You got to get rid of sin in your life, in my life. You got to eliminate sin that God, that God point out to you, to the preaching, that you need to get this sin right, this area, this attitude right. And that's how it begins. You begin to grow spiritually. So first, we need to renounce sin of our life. So if we're going to grow spiritually, we need to get rid of sin in our life. And Peter here in our text mentions five dirty sins, five rotten attitudes that we need to take off just like we take off dirty clothes. He mentions five dirty sins, five rotten attitudes, because they are rotten, that you and I need to take off like we take off dirty clothes or dirty socks or dirty underwears every day. That's what he's talking about. These five dirty sins, these five rotten attitudes are marks of immaturity. How do you know if you're not growing spiritually? How do you know if you're not growing spiritually? If these five dirty sins, if these five rotten attitudes are part of your life, if these five rotten attitudes are prominent in your life, you may be a spiritual baby. You're mature. You're not growing spiritually, and I think it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. What are these five dirty sins? What are these five rotten attitudes that will hinder your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth? Because I believe these five dirty sins, these five rotten attitudes symbolize infancy, immaturity. If we're going to grow spiritually, we need to get rid of this five rotten attitude. There's five dirty sins in our life, just like you take off dirty socks and dirty clothes. By the way, these five rotten attitudes are like junk food to your soul. They're junk food. You know, you, you go ahead and you eat junk food every day. Eat your burger and your pizza and your, 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 your donut. And that's what you eat today. You're not going to be healthy. In fact, you're not going to desire healthy food. Because junk food will kill appetite for healthy food. And same thing, these are junk food to your soul. You won't desire, I believe, to even feed upon the Word of God. You won't desire the things of God spiritually if you allow this five dirty sins, this five rotten attitudes that are junk food to your soul. They're not healthy for you because they are hindering your spiritual growth. They're hindering you from being a healthy Christian. So, look, look at it. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Look at it. Follow your Bible, 1 Peter chapter 2, so you can get something out of it. That's why we, we, we encourage you to bring your Bibles. Amen? Hey, we, we preach the Bible here. If you're not interested in the Word of God, then you don't belong here. If you want somebody to entertain you, then you're not welcome here because you're not going to get nothing out of it. You're welcome, but you're not going to get nothing out of it. Because we believe that the reason the church exists is to preach the Word. Notice in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside. Laying aside, there is a command. It's not an option. Laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking in order to grow spiritually. That's a purpose. That's a command. We can't condone these sins. We can't excuse those sins. We can't justify those sins. We can't hide those sins. We must deal with them. If you want to grow spiritually, you take them off like you take your dirty clothes off every day. Notice what he says in 1 Peter 2, 1, laying aside. Let me give you the first rotten attitude, because they're rotten. Here's the first dirty rotten attitude that we must get rid of. Take off like your dirty clothes. Here's the first one. Laying aside all malice. You see it there? That word malice means when you, when you have ill will feelings to someone. You have like ill will feelings to someone that hurted you. Somebody who maybe disappointed you or somebody hurt your feelings and you're holding on to that. Maybe even for months or years. So it is a desire to injure people back from hurting us. This ill feeling, ill will feeling is the spirit of unforgiveness. It is the spirit that says, I'll get you back. I'll pay you back. 
I'm going to do something mean back to you because you did something mean to me. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. That's malice. And God said you need to get rid of it. Take it off like your dirty socks. You know why? Because there's a dirty, rotten attitude that, uh, that is going to rob you from the blessings of God and you're not going to grow spiritually and God cannot use you the way he wants to use you. We must get rid of all malice. All malice. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody injured you? Are you angry at that person because of that, what that person has done to you? Look, God knows your heart. Somebody needs this message this morning. I don't know who needs it, but maybe if it's one person that will get it and get their, their act together, it was worth it. It was worth it. If it just go over your head, the majority, but one person gets it, it was worth it. I didn't waste my time. So, look, do you have an unforgiving spirit this morning? Do you have bitterness in your heart this morning towards someone? Do you have a chip on your shoulder this morning? Do you have hurtful thoughts towards someone? Do you have the desire to hurt people? If that's you, that's malice. That's all malice. That's a dirty sin. That's a right attitude that God said, take it off. Like you take off dirty clothes. God wants us to change our attitude this morning. God wants us to get right with God this morning. That's what God wants because malice is a dirty sin. It's a rotten attitude. You know, I heard a story of Leonardo da Vinci. Anybody knows who is Leonardo da Vinci? He's a true genius in, in, in painting, right? A painter. And I heard a story of Leonardo da Vinci that he was painting the Last Supper of Jesus. You know, remember the disciples when they were in the, Lord, in the upper room, in the, taking the Lord's Supper in the upper room? Twelve of them? He wanted to do a painting on the Lord's Supper and, and, and paint it uh, uh, in the upper room with the 12, Jesus with the 12 disciples. But while he was painting that picture, that painting, Leonardo da Vinci had a bitter enemy. He had ill will feeling and bitterness and anger and hatred towards this bitter enemy. And while he got to Judas' face, the one that betrayed Jesus, he said, I'm going to get the enemy. You thinking about that? He said, I'm going to put, I'm going to paint his face. I'm going to teach him a lesson. And he did that in the face of Judas. And then while he, while he was painting the face of Jesus, he had a hard time. He couldn't get it right. This genius painter, he couldn't get it. He tried again. First attempt, didn't get it right. It's not coming out. The second attempt, he couldn't get it right. And then he dawned on him. He got into tremendous conviction and realized that he needed to let go of the ill will feeling towards the enemy. He needed to let go of the anger and that unforgiving spirit and in that hatred, because he couldn't paint the face of Jesus until he realized first he had to let go of that malice, that anger, that unforgiving spirit, that hatred towards his enemy. If he don't do that, then he will not be able to see clearly and paint clearly the face of Jesus. And then after he let go of the anger and all the malice, then he began, he took his brush back out, he removed the face of that friend, and he put Judas face back in there, and then he was able to see clearly and paint the face of Jesus, and it came out great. You know, that's a lesson for us. I believe that story is a lesson for us this morning who are holding on to all malice. You're holding on to ill will feelings towards someone. You're holding on to anger. You have an unforgiving spirit. You got hatred in your heart towards someone. If you have malice in your heart towards someone, if you have a bad desire to hurt someone, you are not growing spiritually. You're not going to be used by God effectively. You need to let it go. You know what? You're not going to be able to keep your eyes clearly on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to keep your mind focused clearly on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're looking at, we're supposed to be looking unto Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2, the author and finisher of our faith. You know, but if you're looking at that hurt, that the person that hurt you, and you're looking at the anger, and you're, you're letting it fester up in your life, you're not going to be able to see the face of Jesus clearly in your life. You're not going to keep your eyes on Christ, and you're going to make a mess out of your life. You're going to be miserable. You know what? 
ask King Saul. I've been teaching on Wednesday night about King Saul. Ask King Saul, guess what? He didn't protect his heart. He had a lot of malice. He had a lot of hatred and anger bitter towards King David. And it destroyed his life. It dest he wasn't growing. I believe he's in heaven. He was a baby Christian. He wasn't growing. He was immature. He was selfish. And he had a, 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 a distressing spirit. He was, he, he was uh, 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 empty of joy. He, was, he had a miserable spirit that he ended up committing suicide. That's all. It's not going to go well for you if you don't remove that dirty, rotten attitude of all malice. Lay aside the dirty clothes of malice. Lay aside. Put it off like dirty clothes. I wonder who God is speaking to this morning. I'm not talking about maybe an adult here. You know God is speaking to you. This message was prepared for you. Here's the second rotten attitude that you and I must take out, take off out of life like dirty clothes if you want to grow spiritually. If you want to be right with God, if you want to be blessed by God. Number two, look at 1 Peter 2, 1, laying aside all guile. That's the second dirty, rotten attitude that we must get rid of like dirty clothes. All guile. This is any form of dishonesty. This is trickery, deceitfulness. Are you deceiving anyone with your dishonesty and tricks? Are you dishonest in lying? Are you a young person who is dishonest in cheating in your tests? Are you dishonest in lying to your parents? Lying to your mom and dad? Are you living a lie? Listen, in Acts chapter 5, I preached that last Sunday about purity of the church. And there was a couple, and an I and Sapphira, who were living a lie. They were full of disguise and, and deception. And they thought they could fool God because the Bible said Peter looked at their heart and Peter detected a sin of, of, uh, of, of uh, guile and deception and hypocrisy. And he, he, Peter said, you have not lied unto man but unto God. And look, God sees your heart. Look, we could fool each other, but you can't fool God Almighty. You could live a lie and live and, and, and fake it all you want, but God looks in the heart. You can't fool God Almighty. And God has no fellowship with that sin, and God will deal with you about that sin. Guile is all that is false. God is all that is a lie. God is all that is deceptive. It's like a bait in a hook to deceive the fish. Are you doing that? Are you a deceiver? Are you walking around, uh, 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 you know, deceiving people with your, with your guile, with your deception, with your trickery? Somebody get right with God this morning. Somebody get rid of that, dirty, that, that rotten attitude of guile. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, it says, Wherefore, putting away lying, Speak every man true with his neighbor. God said, put away that dirty clove of, of, of guile, lying. God says, speak, everybody here needs to speak the truth with your neighbor. We ought to be honest. Because the Bible says in Numbers chapter 32, verse 23, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. That rotten attitude that you're trying to hide, trying to deceive people, it's going to catch up to you sooner or later. Because God's going to bring you to the light. And God's going to allow you to get caught. Because your sin will find you out. Can't get away with it. Look, if we want to grow spiritually, we must take off the dirty clothes of all guile, all that is false, all that is fake, all that is deceptive, because God has no fellowship with a lying tongue. God has no fellowship with a guile person, a deceptive person. Listen, all guile, all deception, all lies has its origin from the devil. You're acting just like the devil. He's the one influencing you because the Bible tells us in John chapter 8 verse 44 that he's the father of lies. He's the source of lies. He invented a lie. He's a liar. So when you act like that, 
You're acting just like the devil. I think a Christian needs to be an open book, an honest person. You have to be honest. You have to be an open book. And you know what? Just like Jesus. Jesus was honest. There was no guile, no malice, no hypocrisy in his life. But even the enemy said, this man has done nothing wrong. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 tells us, it tells us about Jesus, and that's the one that we need to be like. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, it tells us, who did no sin, neither was God foul in his mouth. That's the one we need to follow. You can't accuse Jesus of being fake. No, he was real. He was pure and genuine. There's no malice and no guile in his heart. That's how you and I need to be if you call yourself a Christian. Here's the third rotten attitude. Five of them. Here's the third rotten attitude that we must get rid of. Like dirty clothes if you want to grow spiritually. Here's the third one. 1 Peter 2.1 Laying aside all hypocrisies. That's the scene of plain acting. That's having a two-face. That's wearing the mask. That's pretense. That's pretending to be someone that you're not. The hypocrite is a Hollywood actor pretending to be someone that he's not. He is hiding his real motive. His motives are selfish. And you know what? Nobody sees your motive, but God sees them. And you need to get rid of, you need to ask God to forgive you and repent of your bad motives. Your evil, dirty motives. Hypocrisy, come clean. Take the mask off. Be an open book. We need to take off, let's take off the dirty clothes of all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies. God hates it. Yeah, God's speaking to you right now. Because he knows your heart. He knows your heart, your heart, your heart, your heart, your heart. Careful, God. And sin will find you out. You don't want to continue living the life. You need to repent. You're going to, you're going to destroy your life. You're going to look back and say, Pastor was right. When you're sitting in a jail cell because you don't follow the sin, and your life is messed up with all kind of addiction, you make a mess out of your life, you're going to look back and say, that pastor was right. When I heard him, I should have took it serious, that message. Look, here's the four and rotten attitude that we need to take off like dirty clothes. If you want to grow spiritual and be right with God, look in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, laying aside all envies. That's having a jealous spirit like jealous Saul. Jealous spirit. You know, this is, you know that envy is a sin of the flesh? Many times we like to blame the devil a lot. The devil make me do it. No, it's your flesh. That's a sin of the flesh. In fact, let me read to you Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, because right here, God mentions a list of gross sins that God hates. And let me read to you, let me, just to mention some, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. What is lasciviousness? Out of control, lust. I mean, you're consumed by the lust of the eye. You want to you wanna feed the flesh sinful desires. And you is out of control. That's lasciviousness. And then it says idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies. There it is, envies. Murders, drunkenness. You know, at times we think that being full of envy is not that bad. Well, God puts it in the list of gross sins. He puts it in there. You know why I believe he put it in there? Because when you, when you have a lot of envy in your heart, you're probably going to commit all these gross sins. Because that's what it will lead you. And 
Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you have envy in your heart over the success of others? That means you're not happy for them. Maybe someone sings a special in the church or even in your school. And they did a good job. They work hard. They practice. And here you are. You say, oh, I could do better than that. That's envy. That's envy. Someone gets blessed. Maybe they get a new car, a new iPhone, a new laptop, and your heart is full of envy, and you say, I should have got that. I, 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 the Bible says you're supposed to rejoice with those who rejoice. Stop being selfish and full of envy that it's all about you. And here we are, somebody gets a new car, a new iPhone, a new laptop, and in your heart, uh, uh, they tell you, look, uh, God, look, look what my mom bought me. Look what my dad bought me, and in your heart, you're like, oh, I should have got that. I'm more spiritual than that person. I go to church more than that person. I should have got that. Look, we need to get rid of that envy in your heart because it's hindering your spiritual growth. It's hindering your spiritual growth. Take off the dirty clothes of envy. But here's the fifth and last rotten attitude that we must take off like dirty clothes. Look at 1 Peter 2, 1, laying aside all evil speaking. All evil speaking, that's slandering other people. That's talking down other people. You know what the Bible calls that? The Bible calls that a backbiting tongue. Proverbs talks about that. That is a backbiting tongue. Backbiting is talking maliciously about someone who is not present. To backbite is to gossip about someone behind his back. I wonder if somebody here, you're doing that with your friend, your secret slandering. And by the way, that is that false accusing people, slandering people, talking down about people, that's acting like the devil. Because that's the name of Satan, he's a slanderer. You act, you're acting just like the devil. And it is strongly condemned in the Bible. Evil speaking, slandering gossiping that is strongly condemned in the Bible you know what the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9 it tells us that a hypocrite with his mouth destroy his neighbor you walk around being deceptive with all guile all malice bitterness hatred in your heart chip on your shoulder evil speaking of people lying you're destroying, you're destroying people around you. You know what the Bible tells us? In James chapter 4, verse 11, it says that you're not supposed to speak, speak not evil of one another, brethren. That's what James chapter 4 tells us. Don't speak evil of one another, brethren. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 29, that you're supposed to use your mouth to edify people, to minister grace to them. So when you open your mouth, it better be something positive, uplifting, be a blessing, and build people up and encourage people. Don't tear them down. And minister grace with your lips. If you want God to extend grace to you, you better use your lips to, extend, to minister grace to others. That's what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Read it for yourself. And that's what God wants. So look, let me challenge you this morning three questions to ask. Before any evil speaking come out of your mouth, before you're going to talk evil about someone and backbite and gossip, before you open your mouth and the wrong things, you need to ask yourself these three questions. Number one, is it truth? Number two, is it loving? Number three, is it edifying? Look, it may be true, but it's not loving and it's not edifying. And look, you need to get rid of that dirty, rotten attitude. I'm just telling you if you want to grow spiritually. You don't have to do it if you don't want. That's between you and God. But if you really want to be right with God, you want God to extend grace and bless you in your life, and God be happy with you, then you and I, if you want to grow spiritually, you need to take off this dirty clothes of evil speaking. You need to remove all this fire rotten attitude that you got to take off, the dirty clothes of all malice, the dirty clothes of all guile, the dirty clothes of all hypocrisy, the dirty clothes of all envies, the dirty clothes of all evil speaking. Why? 
Why? To grow spiritually. To be blessed by God. Don't you want to be blessed by God? Then you must, you must renounce sin in your life. Eliminate this five dirty attitudes, rotten attitudes out of your life. So three simple steps that Peter gives us in order for us to grow spiritually. I said number one, step number one, renounce the sin of your life. Step number two, receive the word of God. Or feed upon the word of God. I want you to look over here, look, look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Notice in verse 2. Because I believe that if we don't deal with this five right attitudes, you're, not, you're going to lose your appetite to feed upon the word of God. Remember what I told you in the beginning, that these five right attitudes is like junk food to your soul? And when you eat a lot of junk food, it's going to kill your appetite for healthy food, right? And when you don't deal with this five right attitude, with this junk food to your soul, it'll kill your appetite to even feed upon the healthy word of God that brings nourishment to your life. I tell you why people don't want to go to church. They don't want to sell out for Jesus Christ. They don't want to come to Sunday school. They skip Sunday school. They, they skip services. You know why? Because you don't really have a strong appetite for the word of God. I promise you there's sin in your life. Because sin will kill the appetite for the word of God. He just mentioned five dirty attitudes that we got to go. And then he said, when you deal with them, then you're going to desire. Look what it says. 1 Peter 2, 2, as newborn, as newborn baby, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. God's word is nourishing, is the source for spiritual growth. That's the source. Can't grow apart from that. Spiritually. But I, I, I kind of like what he says. Notice what he says, desire. I like that expression because he could have said, Peter could have said as newborn babe, he, he could have said as newborn babe, read the sincere milk of the word. He could have said that. He says as newborn babe, study the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Obey the word of God. Live the word. He could have said that. He could have said that. But he said first, desire. You know why? Because unless you desire the word of God like a baby desires milk, and that's a strong desire when a baby cries, unless you desire, you will not read it. You will not obey it. You will not meditate on it. You will not study it. You will not memorize it. You will not live it. It starts with a desire. That's where it starts. And there's something killing your desire. That's why you won't come back tonight. And that's why some of you will come back next Sunday, Lord willing. You don't have a desire. You're not healthy. If you don't have appetite to eat, you're sick. If you don't have an appetite to hear the word of God when the doors are open, you're sick, Christian. I know this preaching is not popular. I know that. But you should know the truth, and the truth should make you free. And look, he mentions there, as newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. That's how you're going to grow. Notice it's called the sincere milk of the word. That word sincere, it means pure. God's word is pure. This book is pure. Because the one who wrote it is Pure. There's no God in the Word of God. There's no double, there's no hypocrisy in the Word of God. And that's what that word means there. It means the pure Word of God. The Word of God is pure, it's not full of guile and hypocrisy like us. You know what that means? He said you're supposed to desire this is a strong appetite. You ever heard a baby cry? If you don't feed that baby, you're not going to sleep. Because that cry is loud. That's a strong desire. That's a strong hunger. And that's how we are to desire God's word. With a hunger. 
And you know what? That means that the Bible is pure, sincere. That means that the Bible, if you take it straight in its purity, if you take, it, if you take the Bible straight in its purity, you know what it's going to do? It's going to tell you the honest truth about yourself. The word of God the pure, is going to tell you the honest truth about yourself. It exposes the very thoughts and motives of your heart so that you have nowhere to hide. It's going to expose your envy, your hypocrisy, your malice, your evil speaking, your rotten attitude. That's what it does, the word of God. That's why you're saying, pastor, in your mind, you're saying, how do you know that's my attitude? God knows. Yeah, God's preaching to you this morning. Because he lives with you. That's what God's word does. But I believe there are so many soft preachers out there who sugarcoat the word of God to make everyone feel good about themselves. We got a lot of them. Not here. Not here. You know, it's like going to the doctor and the doctor don't want to talk about sickness. He don't want to talk about sickness to his patients. He wants to give you sugar-coated pills that make you feel good without dealing with the root cause of your problem. That's not the right doctor. And the Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 14. Look what God says in Jeremiah 6, 14. It says, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there's no peace. You know what God is saying there? Talk about these soft preachers who sugarcoat the word of God. They have healed the wound of my people superficially. Too many soft preachers out there. People are broken. They need people to point out the root, the root cause of the problem, which is sin. That's the problem of all problems, sin. And too many are sugarcoating, and they're not detecting the root of the problem, which is sin. They're sugarcoating it. And God is upset with those preachers in Jeremiah Day. God is saying to them, they, they heal the wound of my people superficially. The Bible declares the root cause of our problem, which is sin. And Peter nailed it on the head. He says, five rotten attitudes. That is destroying your spiritual growth. So we got to receive the word of God. Instead of feeding upon malice, instead of feeding upon guile and hypocrisy and envy and evil speaking, feed upon God's word. Because I believe when you feed upon God's word, which is healthy for your soul, it will, I promise you, if you feed upon God's word every day, and you take God's word seriously, it's going to nourish you, and you're going to get rid of, naturally, this rotten attitudes. I promise you, the reason you're struggling with these rotten attitudes in your life is because you're not feeding upon the word of God. I'm preaching to you this morning, yes. What is killing your appetite this morning for the word of God? I know what it is. I don't have to live with you. Sin. Sin. You know what it is? It's sin. Before you could desire God's word, you had to take off these five rotten attitudes like you take off dirty clothes. Get rid of that junk food to your soul. That's why you're not hungry for the word of God. That's why you act the way you act. That's why you lie to your dad. You're living in guile. You're a hypocrite. You're wearing the mask. You're not being honest with your mom and dad. Number three steps. I said the first step, you have to renounce all the sin of your life. You have to receive the word of God. And last step, remember God is good. Remember God is good. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 3. Look at it. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 3. If so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You know why? Living the faithful Christian life doesn't taste good to many. You don't sell out. You don't get serious about God's business. You don't get faithful in church. You don't read your Bible every day. You know why it doesn't taste good? It's the best life. Sin! I don't have to live with you. Sin! This far right attitude, young person. Because if your mom was here, she'd be saying, Amen. Give it, Pastor. Maybe you should have your mom listen to this sermon online. 
Look, that's why being faithful and being the Christian God, it's not, it, it doesn't taste good to you. Drugs, alcohol, marijuana, that tastes better for you. That's junk food. Look, God tastes better than sin. You know, revenge is sweet for a while. You know, it feels good when you shoot back, when you want to hurt back, right? But I, it don't last. But I tell you what's long-lasting, when you forgive. When you're kind and you're forgiving and you're merciful and you extend grace, like God extend grace, that's long-lasting joy. And I believe that when you follow the first two steps, when you renounce the sin of your life, when you receive the word of God, that means when God is pointing the sin in your life and you repent, and you say, I said, I'm done, God, I'm, I, I'm displeasing you, I'm not going to continue with this attitude anymore, I'm going to get rid of this rotten attitude, all five of them, Lord, I'm going to start this morning, just like I take off those dirty clothes, and I'm going to put clean clothes of good attitude, and have a good spirit, and then when you do that, then guess what? If it starts with repentance, then you get your appetites back. Now, serving Christ, going to church, is enjoyable. Because now you're right with God. People that are not right with God don't enjoy church, don't enjoy messages like this. Because that's what sin does. Sin distances you from following Christ closely. So I believe when you follow the first two steps, renounce sin in your life, feed up on the word of God, then you're going to realize God is good. You will realize that the Lord is gracious. You're going to start focusing on the kindness of God. And you know God, you're going to realize how good God's me. God doesn't deserve the attitude from me. Here's my right and attitude, the way I treat my parents. My right and attitude, and God's still good to my mom and dad. God bless us with food on the table. God's been good. God healed my mom when she was almost dying. And that's how you're going to respond with that right attitude towards God. I believe when you really deal with this sin, you, you live on the goodness of God every day. You're not going to sin against that love. You're going to start focusing on the kindness of God. You know what the Bible says? The goodness of the Lord leading thee to repentance. You think about it twice before you, you, you smoke that, 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 that marijuana or that alcohol or that beer or that drug, or that whatever uh, uh, thing that you put in your body that you know it is, is a drug, that is a sin against God. You think about it twice before you do it. Because not only am I singing against my parent, I'm singing against God. I believe your perspective towards God will change. Your attitude towards God will change. Your attitude towards other people will change. You will appreciate God's goodness. When you're right with God, you appreciate God's grace. You appreciate God's forgiveness, God's mercy, and you will appreciate God's patience with you. You better thank God God is patient with you and with me. How many of you say God's been good to me? Let me see your hand. How many of you say God has extended mercy in my life, grace, goodness, patience, mercy, God has forgiven me? So why don't you go turn around and do that with your neighbor? And get rid of the guile. The hypocrisy, the malice, the rotten attitude, the evil speaking. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up this morning. You know what I learned? I finished with this. In 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse 1, we see five rotten attitudes, right? That we got we to get rid of. They're junk food to your soul. It describes, the first Peter 2 describes the horizontal sins that we need to lay aside. Horizontal sins. It describes our relational sins that we, we got to deal with people all the time, right? It describes, and you know what? I, and then it brings God in the picture. You know what that tells me? You preach on that Wednesday night. If you're not right with your neighbor, you are not right with God. That was this whole message Wednesday, Wednesday night, if you were paying attention. Don't tell me that I love the Lord, I'm right with God, and you're not right with your mom and dad. 
You're not right with your brother or, or somebody in school, another student in school. No, you're not. You're not right with God. You got a right attitude and you need to deal with it. I hope you're in the conviction. That's a good sign. You're safe. If it doesn't bother you, I can't wait to this preacher stop preaching and you need to get saved this morning. Because when your horizontal is right, I believe the vertical becomes right too. You know what, First John 4.20, I'll give you a verse to back it up. First John chapter 4, verse 20, if any man say I love God and hated his brother is a liar. I didn't say it, God said it. If any young person here, any adult say I love God and hate your brother, you got malice, guile, this five rotten attitudes are prominent in your life, maybe if it's one or two, you are not right with God this morning. You're a liar. You're a liar. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Who's going to grow up this morning? Stay on our feet. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every, eye, every, every head bowed. Who could honestly say this morning, Pastor, thank you for that message. I needed that message. I needed it this morning. Let me see your hand. God spoke to my heart this morning, Pastor. Look, I appreciate your honesty. I want God to speak to your heart because all of us are sinners. We mess up all the time. We're not perfect. We never become perfect. But you know what? When you go to church and God's word exposes sin in your life, rotten attitude, dirty sin, then we need to get rid of them like dirty clothes. That means uh, let's make a decision this morning. I'm going to get right with God this morning. You say, ah, oh, what are other people going to think? If I walk on the aisle and I get on my knee, well, they're going to think that you're, that, that, that you're serious about serving Christ. Who cares what anybody thinks? I want to make sure I'm right with God. The invitation is open. If you need to be saved this morning, listen up. If you need to be saved this morning, why don't you come and get saved this morning? Starts with that. Why don't you come and get saved? Why don't you walk down the aisle as a pastor? I want to get saved this morning. I, I, I'm going to stop playing games. I'm going to stop pretending to be, act like I'm saved when I'm not. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get real salvation this morning. I wonder who's going to be the first one who's going to do that. Anyway, the invitation is open.